Hey guys, how's it going? So today it's gorgeous out here and we're gonna be doing some bulb planting and I'm gonna be digging elephant ears, which I have already started the process of. I'm gonna finish up up here. I've got a few more um, tubers to dig. So I wanted to talk a little bit about that first before we go do some bulb planting. Um, I don't have a ton of experience with elephant ears. This is the first time I've ever planted them in the ground in our landscape. And it was really interesting because I planted some here underneath the shade of this crab apple tree in our front yard. And then I planted some right behind our chicken coop which they got sun for a good portion of the day the ones behind the chicken coop grew a lot bigger they uh, just they performed better than the ones that had more shade which is really interesting to me because I always feel like those types of plants those tropical kind of I don't know I always feel like they're gonna burn in our Sun because there's just it's such a our heat is so intense and there's no cloud cover or humidity to protect them, it's so dry. Uh, so I was really pleasantly surprised that they could handle as much sun as they did. So I've already dug the ones behind the chicken coop and I've already prepped those for storage in one way and I'm gonna prep these bulbs in a second, like a different way. And I just wanna test out the two different methods to see which one works better for me. I found with storing any kind of bulb or tuber, there are tons of different opinions on how to do it right, um, tons of different methods and I really feel like every method you could be successful with depending on where you live and what your storage situation is like. Um, like we recently just posted a video of me digging my dahlia tubers and I kind of shared the process of how I'm storing them in my area and I always try to caveat like we are dry here, um, it gets very cold here and I try to stress like it may not work the same in your location like the same exact steps I'm taking if you have really high humidity uh, and things like that. So I think it comes down to experimenting a little bit maybe even um, experiencing a little bit of failure in order to figure out what works best in your area to store. Um, it also makes a huge difference if you have the proper temperatures to store things. Like most bulbs, dahlia tubers, and these elephant ears want to be somewhere between like 40 and 50 degrees consistently. And if you don't have that, if it's an area that's too warm, they can dry out really quickly. If it's too cold, they can freeze. If it fluctuates, it can kind of mess with the system of the bulb. Um, so I think all of those things are factors and it's just a good thing to experiment. And that's why I wanted to try these two different methods for the elephant ears. So we did film when I dug the ones behind the chicken coop and I'm gonna kind of explain how I'm going to do that storage method. So when I dug those up, first off, I cut the foliage back um, to about, I don't know, six inches or so above the ground. Then I dug them up, making sure to keep my uh, shovel away from the base of the bulb. Now, there are two different kinds of elephant ears. I should start with that maybe. Um, there are types that will clump out and will spread like that. And then there are types that are runners that'll have kind of like their main tuber with the roots that come down and then they'll send off sucker kind of things on the surface of the ground most of the time. There are a couple varieties that will spread underneath by rhizomes, um, but the kind I have spread on the soil surface. So you can see, you can see those runners and they'll root in and create new plants that way. Um, so with the ones that clump out at the base, those are the ones to be particularly careful when you're digging not to get your shovel too close because you don't want to accidentally pierce one of those tubers. So I got mine all dug up and I started to remove some of the soil gently from the root system of the plant and then I ended up deciding to spray them off with water because the soil was so uh, like sticky and a little bit muddy. I thought this is going to take forever for these things to dry out. So I think I would be better off, you know, using the jet sprayer on the end of my hose to jet spray off as much water as possible. You want to make sure to keep that water away from the top of the plant where you cut off the leaves so that no water no water gets into the crown of the plant um, but that way it just like frees up those roots from all that mud and they can dry out a lot quicker I then took my falcos and just pruned off all of the excess roots because you don't need all of those um, just to kind of clean up the base of the bulb and I went ahead and cut the leaf stalk a little bit shorter because the base of the bulb it kind of looks like all one continuous piece. You see the bottom where the roots come out and then it's like a hard kind of, and I'll show you on these, it's a little bit hard at the base and then it gradually gets softer as the leaves start to like grow up vertically. So you don't wanna cut down too low. But anyway, when I had them all cleaned up, mud was gone, roots were gone, all the leafy structure was gone. I laid them down in our basement, which that's where they still are to dry out. And we wanna let them dry for like probably seven to 14 days in my area, probably seven days because it's so dry. In another area with high humidity, you might be looking at two weeks, maybe even longer. And then I'm gonna be packing them away much like I did with my dahlias in um, crates that are 
like have a lot of airflow and I stack them in between layers of vermiculite that's been like so ever so slightly moistened. And I think that was a little bit of a confusing thing in our Dahlia video because I mentioned how I needed to lightly moisten that vermiculite. Um, and I'm not moistening it to the point where it actually feels wet. It's just like the tiniest bit cool to the touch. Nothing clumps together. It's still got the same consistency as when it's dry. It just feels a little cooler and in such a dry climate, it helps the bulbs not desiccate so quickly, even in storage. So once I get all of these elephant ear tubers packed up, I'll put them in our root cellar, which stays, I think I'm gonna set it like right at 45 um, and they should be fine. I hope. <laughs> Again, this is an experiment for me. I'll be checking on them probably every two to four weeks just to make sure that everything's okay in there. Nothing's like molded or nothing's too dry. Same with dahlias. And the second method, which is what I'm going to be doing with the ones back here, I've got eight, I think, planted in the ground. I'm going to dig them up trying to keep as much of their current root system as possible. I'm gonna actually pot them. I've got some leftover containers from another project in fresh potting soil, and then I'm gonna put them in our basement, which stays a little bit warmer than the root cellar. It's usually like 55, 60 in there, and I think it'll be perfect just to keep the growth rate, like I think they'll kind of kick into dormancy down there. Um, but there are some people who swear by just potting them up, keeping them over like that, and then later on, like, mid spring kind of when it warms up enough in our cold frame I can move them from our basement to the cold frame and let them start growing on so that they're already like producing leafy growth by the time I'm ready to plant them out in the ground so that method versus putting a like dried up kind of bulb in the ground we'll kind of see what growth rate we get and which method we're successful with and I know it can be a little bit frustrating when you're starting to research a topic that you really don't know a lot about because I get this way I'm reading about like you know how to store calicasias elephant ears and I'm seeing all of these different methods and people are like don't do it this way I do it this way um, sometimes I feel like you just have to just start trying stuff and see what takes see what works um, for your area and for your particular situation. So you can see my supplies here. I've got some leftover containers, fresh potting mix. I'm gonna need to go pick up more saucers. I only have one saucer that fits these containers, so I need seven more. And I've got my shovel and my gloves. And then this is the area where I had them, right behind the Hebe fountain here. And you can see that we've most definitely had cold enough nights to kill off the tops. So there's the top of the elephant ear. There's still some like fresh little cute leaves down here. So I don't think I've left them in the ground too long. So I'm gonna be cutting this affected foliage back and then digging up each one of these clumps. So there's one here, here, there, and then they're just kind of swinging around the back side of these hostas. Okay, so let's get these all dug up. I'm just gonna line them up here in this flower bed and I think this is where I'm gonna pot them too. I don't really wanna take them all the way to the greenhouse or anything because I can haul them right inside our front door to our basement. <laughs> aren't the saddest looking <laughs> tubers ever. I mean, if you compare these to the ones behind the chicken coop, which were planted right around the same time, same variety, like these don't even compare to the ones in more sun. So I guess, you know, I learned something right there, right away. But I'm still encouraged because they've got a nice root system. However, I don't think I'm gonna just plant one per pot because they're gonna just be going into dormancy. I think I'm gonna put two or three per container just to save on soil. But you can see that I um, went ahead, this is a good example right here, and cut the stalk back, or the, rather the leaves, um, because this is where the actual tuber is here. You can see the roots coming down from it. You can see like the tuber part's very firm. And then as you go up the stalk, right about there is where the leaf structure starts. Um, so you don't wanna cut down into the tuber, um, but you don't necessarily want to leave a bunch of the leaves either. I went ahead and left the little ones. You could probably clean those off if you wanted, but they're cute. Okay, so I've got my container here and you can see like how big these containers are. I can easily put a trio in each container. So I'll put like maybe two, since I have eight, I'll put two of the biggest ones in one container and then two more groupings of three. So we'll end up with three containers in the end. Alright, 
and there they are all done i ended up doing four pots of two it just fit better that way and that's not a big deal so i do need to get a few more saucers but we'll go ahead and take these down to the basement and i kind of want to hold up one of the other tubers just to remind you like side by side how much bigger the ones that were planted in the sun grew So here they are in the basement. I will water these in once I have proper saucers under them, which I'll do in the next day or two. Um, but these are the bulbs or tubers rather that I gathered from the chicken coop area where they got a lot more sun. I mean, look at the difference. That tuber is a massive. And look at the top versus the top on the one grown in the shade. So definitely a learning year for me, definitely. So these have been sitting down here for about five or so days. They do need some more time to dry out. There's still quite a bit of moisture in there and I want them to be pretty dry before I put them in this crate. See the air flow is very nice in that. I'll line the crate with burlap, which is also breathable. Just this burlap sack here. And then I'll store these in between layers of vermiculite. And we'll just see which method ends up being the best. I'm hoping this method works because these tubers are amazing. Nah, these aren't as good. All right, so now that that project is done, I'm gonna run out to the barn and gather up a bunch of bulbs and our proper augers and bulb tone, and then Aaron and I are gonna get some bulbs in the ground. All right, I've got my cart all loaded up, and this is the first place we're gonna plant. We've been making an effort in some of those areas that were just packed out with annuals in previous years to add in some more permanent plantings. Just so we have some structure, we started with the Firelight Hydrangeas last fall. They performed beautifully this year, and I really did like the mix of annuals we had this year. It was a Play in the Blue Salvia, Truffula Pink Gumfrina, and the Cascade White Angelonia. They all did beautifully in this space. I was really happy with it, but I think this will be so beautiful, packed out with daffodils in the spring. So we're gonna do two different varieties, one variety on the top and one around the bottom. The first one in the upper level will be Frosty Snow, which is a little bit of a taller growing daffodil, 16 to 18 inches tall, blooms early to mid season, and they're bright white with a yellow cup, and that yellow cup does turn white after a certain amount of time. And then in the bottom level, we've got this variety. I'm not sure how to pronounce it, How Hawara, Hawara. It's a shorter one, eight to 10 inches tall, and it also blooms mid season, a really pretty primrose yellow color, I'm excited about this one. These are smaller bulbs, like by a long shot. These are much bigger. So these have kind of like a more almost wild appearance. They have clusters of blooms, but I think it's gonna be a beautiful show. And Aaron is all ready with the auger. You ready to aug 1200 holes? Born ready. <laughs> aug isn't a verb. I think, dog. yeah, I think a lot of people have pointed that out, but dog. you know what, we'll make it a verb. Yeah. It is a verb now. Yeah, heck yeah. Aaron's gonna aug the holes. All right, so Aaron is gonna work on getting the holes dug. I'm gonna put in bulb tone in all the holes. We'll get the bulbs planted, and then we'll move on to the next area, maybe. I don't know how long this is gonna take. <laughs> top level planted 172 daffodils up there it's gonna look so awesome um, and we didn't really have any troubles at all with that but we're running into a little bit of a snag down here on this bottom level so we thought we might try the trough method which I don't usually prefer because it's a lot of dirt moving but I think we figured out why this side of the raised bed always has plants that yellow we thought we were maybe just giving it too much water but it was, it's weird because we always had the same amount of drip tubing in all the bed but this side we're running into concrete, like a concrete floor. That's not very far down. No, it's not. That's just a few inches down. And we don't know how far it goes, like how far it goes into the bed, like how it's draining right there. Yeah, look at that. It's like everywhere. But all the plants, so all the plants from about here like this is the moon shape right here that always kind of suffers and the rest of it does really well. And in fact, we have to supplement water sometimes the other side. It always like tends to need a tiny bit more water. So that's good to know. 
I guess. Maybe when we put drip in, we don't put any drip over here. Or maybe we just tear the whole thing out right now. I think we should have our daffodil show first. Okay. <laughs> so we're gonna go ahead and carry on and plant these daffodils and we'll see what happens. <laughs> update for you guys we've planted about half of this bottom layer so from about over here all the way to where the bulbs start and what we ended up doing down here was Aaron went around and dug the whole area just making the soil really loose and then I poured a bunch of bulb tone on top of the soil and kind of worked it in with my fingers and then we laid the bulbs out and they look incredibly thick but there's actually a lot of papery skins <laughs> hanging out like right in here that are not bulbs so they're not quite as thick, they are thickly planted, but not quite as thick as it looks. But I just wanted to give you an idea. And I cannot believe that a thousand fit in this area, Aaron. It's crazy. He's being a trooper helping me with this. <laughs> Bulb planting is not for the faint of heart. almost done. Aaron just has, I don't know, like 10 or 15 more bulbs to put in. And honestly, like this whole area swallowed up 1,172 bulbs, <laughs> which we could have spaced them out better, you know, but this is almost like a giant container. And as we were planting, Aaron was saying how he, his vote was next spring after they're done blooming to kind of excavate this whole area and figure out what's going on underneath, which is probably a smart thing to do, especially because, you know, we want to do more permanent plantings. And if those firelight hydrangeas are going to eventually run into a concrete base with no drainage or something like that, then we need to get them out and fix it. Um, so that's probably what we'll do. So we'll probably replace or uh, transplant, I guess is the right word, transplant the daffodil bulbs after they're done blooming next year and then we'll excavate the area maybe. And I have to admit that that was a lot of hard work. Usually in a normal year when I'm not six and a half months pregnant and dealing with rib issues and all that sort of thing, it's um, a lot easier. And so doing this project would have been nothing. I actually brought more bulbs out. I was hoping to get a between two and 3,000 in the ground today. And there's just no way. We just, uh, we're deciding as we're finishing up that I think we're gonna be done after we're done with this project just for today. And then we'll plug away at it, um, hopefully over the next week. I do think, however, we are gonna bring in some mulch. We're not quite done. We'll tomorrow morning bring in some mulch just to cover up, especially the bottom layer because we weren't able to get some of those bulbs as deep as we wanted. The regular daffodil bulbs on the top went six inches deep. These only need to be planted four inches deep, but even four inches deep was a little bit hard in some spots. So just topping them up with mulch will help kind of protect them this winter. I wish there was more to show after a project like this. <laughs> it's like, ta-da, here's my pile of dirt with leaves on top and such. But next spring, this should be really, really beautiful. I'm really looking forward to seeing what it's gonna turn out looking like. And that's gonna be it, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and we will see you in the next one. Bye. What are you doing, bud? Are you on the lookout? That's important job. I can't reach you, bud.